Hey there art nerds, I've got another Stash Buster watercolor tutorial for you guys today. These tutorials are designed to use up those scraps of watercolor paper that you've been hoarding and also help you practice watercolor without having to be particularly good at drawing. Today's tutorial is a little bit more involved than some of our previous Stash Buster tutorials, but I definitely believe in you and it really focuses on a few basic techniques implemented in just kind of a specific way so i think you've got it in you to paint this seaside seascape whoo what a tongue twister along with me today so grab your paints grab your brushes and let's get painting The materials you'll need for today's Stash Buster are pretty straightforward. You're going to need a scrap of watercolor paper. I recommend cotton rag cold press watercolor paper. You're also going to need some washi tape to tape down your bookmark. You're going to need some sort of structural support. I'm using political sign board. You can use chipboard, whatever you've got. You're also going to need your favorite watercolor palette, a variety of brushes, a paper towel, a ceramic palette or plate, and some masking fluid. And the masking fluid is an important one today. So we're going to use our washi tape to secure our book more bookmark down to our structural support. I'm using MT's washi tape. It's one of the best washi tapes I found for this. I highly recommend it. I will have the supplies that I'm using down in the description below, but please feel free to paint with whatever you're comfortable with. So for our sand, I am using kind of a yellow ochre color and I'm creating kind of a beachfront swoosh at the front and then kind of filling it in the rest of the way back. This is a great one for your granulating water colors particularly for the sand because it can give you kind of that gritty textured effect but if you're painting with dye based watercolors fear not you might just want to do a few more speckles I'm also going to use some clean water to kind of wash out and soften that beach transition so that it looks like it's kind of going into the waves and that's going to become more apparent a little bit later on while it's still wet and that's one of the reasons why I recommend that you work with cotton rag cold pressed watercolor paper because a lot of the techniques we're doing today are really reliant on on the paper holding on to that moisture for us. I am grabbing, this is gonna be Quinn Gold. No, sorry, I lied to you. I'm actually grabbing a really, really light pink and dabbing it in wet and wet. I'm also gonna grab some blues. You can use whatever colors you like. We're using this to kind of start our seashells and our starfish, just whatever you feel like adding in here. You could do a bottle with a note inside. I'm going pretty simple for this one. I'm using hot pink, light pink, and I think I'm also using a blue but you can use your favorite colors. This could be a great way to kind of customize this bookmark to kind of suit your own personality and your own desires. And I'm gonna let those colors kind of blend out wet into wet and we get kind of a neat soft transition. A little bit later on, I'm gonna add some more details to them, but I thought this was a great way to introduce a very simple wet into wet technique. That can be a great way to kind of start to introduce objects into your illustration. So I want to preserve the objects. I want to kind of start sketching them in as well. And we're going to use masking fluid for this. So I allowed my paper to dry fully. I have my masking fluid in a dinky dip, a small cup with a suction cup base. And I'm using a synthetic watercolor brush with some brush soap just to preserve the bristles and the ferrule. And I'm going to start by kind of carefully, and I know this is hard to see, I'm sorry. I am using tinted masking fluid, but white on white is always difficult to see. So I am using my masking fluid to start kind of sculpting in my waveform. So this would be a good one to pull up some reference and to just kind of try to simplify but also replicate what you're seeing. I'm also bringing some of those waveforms into the sand to give the impression that the waves are overlapping on top of the beach. And I'm just kind of being deliberate, slow, and careful. I'm painting some scallops for that. Once I've got that started, I'm going to go ahead and start masking out my seashells using really simple seashell shapes. Whew, again, another tongue twister. I said that one better this time. It's another good opportunity to just kind of look up what these shapes might look like if you're not familiar with them. I highly recommend 
simplifying, simplifying, simplifying them. Keep them super simple because it's going to make it a lot easier for you to paint and they're still going to turn out really cute. You don't have to get complicated with this. So there's a little bit, a little bit of drawing ability, but frankly, you could keep it just starfish and sand dollars. So star shapes and circles, and it would still look really cute. If you can paint a clamshell shape, you feel free to add some of those in as well. It really doesn't have to get complicated. So I'm just kind of trying to paint in different seashell shapes, kind of freehanding them. So this is similar to the Easter Bunny and the Easter Chick tutorials where we do a little bit of brushwork, but it's not heavy lifting. It's, it's okay if it doesn't turn out perfect. We're here to paint. We're not here for perfection. And often some of the best watercolor paintings have little bitty imperfections in them. So don't worry too much about it. Once I have my seashells and starfish painted in on my sand, I'm adding in more scalloped waveforms into the water. So basically into the white part. So this is going to keep the paper white and it's going to kind of create our highest highlights, our whitest highlights, our most intense contrast by preserving the white of paper using our masking fluid. I'm also going to use a knocking splatter technique. So my brush has some masking fluid on it. I'm just gently knocking on it to splatter some of that masking fluid onto the paper to create the illusion of our sea spray. And I'm currently mostly focusing on the area closest to the beach, but I'm also kind of bringing it back up into the white area as well. But I am referencing this, so I recommend you reference this. Don't try to paint it exactly as you see it, but more to get the idea of how the different elements interact with each other, how the sea foam interacts with the sand, where the seashells might be placed, where the sea foam might be placed, that sort of thing. So I've allowed it to dry completely, totally, and fully. I'm gonna prop my watercolor structure up from the back this time and I'm using some clean water on the sand because we're going to start adding in some additional layers and I want to get that softer transition. So using yellow ochre again, I'm giving it another layer, kind of blending it out in between layers. I'm not looking for a uniform color. I'm also grabbing in some Quinn Gold to add in some darker colors and you guys can see I'm just kind of adding it in. I'm not being super particular about it. I just want to add some visual interest so you want to make sure you leave some room for your colors to breathe so I'm also adding in some burnt umber and some it's it's a Holbein color that's called like antique bamboo really we're adding in some more muted brown some more earth tones and I allowed it to dry fully before we move on to our next step you guys can see how much those colors kind of diffused into our yellow ochre so I'm adding in some more of our Quinn Gold. I'm gonna kind of wash that out in some areas, but this is where I'm going to start kind of creating kind of a pebbly technique. And again, this is where the cold press part of our cold press cotton rag watercolor paper is important. We do want that texture. A hot press has a very smooth finish and it's not gonna hold the water as well and it's not gonna give us as much texture. So while things are still both wet and dry, so there's some areas that are wet and some areas that are dry, I went in and I did some splatter techniques to start adding in kind of the dimension of sand, the idea, the texture of what sand would look like on the beach. And I'm using a few different colors for that, just to start building up that sort of sandy color. I'm also going to use some masking fluid to splatter in some highlights to reserve some lighter areas in our sand, because as we add in layers, this is gonna really add to the texture. I'm also using it to kind of paint in some sandy texture. Basically for that, I just use kind of the side of the brush and just do a little dash. It doesn't have to be that complicated. I also added some more spray effects along the water line. I wanted to bring the beach a little bit more into the ocean, so I'm adding in some yellow ochre where our waves have come, and I'm also brushing it out with some clean water and kind of fading it into the water line. I'm also using a spray bottle of water to kind of encourage those colors to move. 
and I'm just going to add in some more color here and there wet into wet. So one of the cool things about the masking fluid is it actually creates islands of resist so you can get different intensities of color in the same area with very little additional effort. I'm also going in now with some yellow ochre and I'm starting to do kind of a pebbly sand technique. You can have your sand be really fine and just focus on like spray watercolor techniques where you either put watercolor in a spray bottle and spritz it or you dip a toothbrush into it and you kind of flick your fingers across the bristles to get this really fine spray. I'm going for more of a pebbly beach just because I think it's going to add some more visual interest. You could go for a total white sand beach, just very light color with no texture at all. It really kind of depends on what you're feeling and what you want to do and what you feel up to accomplishing. I encourage you to challenge yourself and try something that might be a little bit out of your comfort zone because that's the best way for us to learn and grow. And even with these stats, Buster tutorials, I'm challenging myself to come up with different techniques that play well together that aren't so draftsmanship reliant. For a lot of my watercolor painting life, it's been very comics and illustration focused. I have a lot of underdrawing done and it gets to be kind of paint by numbers, color by numbers, where we're just filling in areas. So for these stash busters, I really wanted to challenge myself to come up with attractive techniques that other people could paint along with that aren't really reliant on a lot of underdrawing or the, the ability to draw. While I have a lot of tutorials here on the channel designed to teach you how to draw, and I would love it if you used them to learn how to draw and told me, I'd love to hear back from you. I know that a lot of people are kind of uncomfortable with that idea or they're not ready to challenge themselves or they don't have that kind of time. And I want you guys to paint so bad that I decided to create some tutorials that will facilitate that even if you're not ready to draw. So while I'm waiting for those layers to dry, I'm going in with our masking fluid and my synthetic brush, and I'm painting in some more of those kind of scalloped waves, especially on top of the areas that I've already kind of created some yellow ochre. So now I'm going to move our prop. It's like a two inch roll of washi tape. This allows gravity to help us do our painting. I'm gonna start focusing on the water itself. We've got the beach almost down pat, but we haven't even started painting the water yet. And you can't really have a beach without some water. So I'm using a little bit of clean water along the beach's end edge. This is gonna kind of create a softer, more subtle transition for our ocean waves, kind of that fade out you get at the ocean. I'm gonna extend that a little bit more into the white of the paper. And I'm going with a beautiful phthalo blue. You could use a blue green. You could use a dark blue. You could use whatever color. This could be a beach on Mars. Well, no, a beach on Venus. It could be hot pink. It doesn't matter. What, what matters is you painting something and having fun with it. So I'm going with a really pretty kind of clear blue color. Being from Southeast Louisiana, our beaches are more mud color. So this is like aspirational colors for me. And I'm just gently brushing them into the areas where we've masked off. And you can start to see how it layers over that yellow ochre and it creates this translucent sort of beach effect. You can also start to see that masking fluid a lot better. So you guys can actually see how I applied it. And then further out into the water, I start adding in a little bit more saturated phthalo blue so that we can start building up that color and building up that saturation as though the water is getting deeper as we go. I'm also gonna add in a little bit of, I don't remember what blue this is, but it's a cooler, darker blue. Just here and there, and you guys can kind of see how the masking fluid prevents that color from really moving across the paper. So it can also be used not just to mask off areas of white, but to prevent too much color movement. I allow that layer to dry and we're going to go back in with our masking fluid and we're going to start building up layers of our sea spray and building up layers of our ocean. So for this, I would really recommend giving yourself at least an hour and a half to paint this. The dry times are going to be one of the one of the deciding factors for how long this takes. If you want to hurry it along, I would not recommend using a hair dryer because it can make your masking fluid permanently affixed to your paper, but I would recommend you could turn on a dehumidifier, you could turn on the fans in your room, you could also turn on the AC or put it under a vent because that air circulation is going to help draw the moisture out of the paper. But this could be a good one to just kind of relax into if you can. You can get as detailed as you want. You can keep it as simple as you want. 
this is your bookmark. So if there's an area where you're like, you know what, I'm good, I'm happy with this, this makes me happy, I might revisit this idea another time and paint another one, but for today, I'm happy with this one, by all means, feel free to hop off the train and just be happy with your bookmark. But I am adding in additional layers of masking fluid. You can kind of see what I'm doing better now that we're not painting white on white. And I'm doing kind of like a scallop technique with additional scallops. So if you've ever looked at like eyelet lace edges, it's kind of similar to that. And I'm also doing kind of just dashy areas where the foam's gotten kind of broken up by the action of the waves. And I have to tell you guys, I have tried to paint waves so many times and I failed so many times and this time it turned out really good so I'm really happy about it and I'm really happy to share it with you guys so after that's had a chance to dry I'm adding in another wash of water and then we're gonna go in with a darker color of blue to start kind of developing that ocean effect so at this point I'm starting to introduce some indigo you guys can see how we're really building up those layers of color we're building up those layers of waves and I feel like that's one of the things that kind of makes this more successful is that patience and that building up and that layering so with these stash buster tutorials I do lean very heavily on resist and mask masking techniques in order to develop our images. This is another one, but there's more of a drawing element in this one in that we are really drawing our ocean waves using masking fluid. So while I'm waiting for that to dry, I can start to remove said masking fluid from our seashells at the bottom. And I'm using a masking fluid pickup to do this. You guys will find a list of all the materials that I'm using for this tutorial down in the description below, as well as some other watercolor tutorials I think you guys will really enjoy. So a masking fluid pickup just makes it easier to pick up the masking fluid. You guys have probably seen some artists using their fingers to do it. Look, my hands are super dry, so that isn't gonna work for me. But a masking fluid pickup, does work for me and it doesn't, I've noticed it doesn't tear the paper as much. So before I start really painting my seashells, I'm going in with a bit of yellow ochre. I'm painting some of the shadows under the waves. I'm painting some shadows under our seashells just to kind of make them look like they belong in this environment, like they're part of this environment. If you don't feel confident in doing that, you don't have to do it. It doesn't detract too much away from the bookmark. It's still going to look great. I just think it makes it look a little bit more like the seashells are actually part of the environment and belong in that environment rather than kind of floating on top of the environment. <laughs> I'm satisfied with that and it's had a chance to dry I'm gonna go in with a darker version of the color so I'm using a brilliant pink for our really light seashells I'm gonna use a hot pink I think it's like an opera pink for our pinker seashells and I'm using vertiver blue for our blue seashells I'm not really mixing things a whole lot darker I'm just using a more saturated version of the same color keeping things really simple I opted for blue and pink but like I said you can use you can use orange and purple you can use whatever colors you want that you think will look good on your beach so it's turning out pretty cute so far I'm gonna add in some more water to our waves and do another layer of our waves so I'm doing kind of a border of clean water in between each layer so that it kind of blends out wet into wet and we get our softer transitions. So it's not just like lines of water. It's more like a slow ombre progression of the watercolor, if that makes sense. So we've got our area that looks like it's translucent against the beach. And then as it moves further out, it looks like it's getting deeper. You can leave your water shallow if you want to. It's all about what you want. This is your bookmark after all, but I thought showing that progression of the water would be cool. And at this point, I'm also adding in some with my brush, I was adding in some watercolor scallops as well to kind of imply the movement of the water. And while I wait for that to dry, I'm going back into the seashells and adding in just some final details using a smaller round brush. Rounds are like my everything. I use them for everything. And I'm just kind of adding in some details just very simply. You don't have to do that if you're not comfortable with it or if you're not really happy with the result. 
So I allowed my bookmark to dry overnight and now I can remove the rest of my masking fluid. Now that the paper is totally dry, it's way less likely to tear the paper when I remove it. So I'm starting with the waves using our masking fluid pickup and I know my hand is obscuring the shot and I apologize for that, but I'm just kind of carefully pulling up at the waves and rather than scrub, scrub, scrubbing, I'm really just trying to pick at it as you guys can see and just trying to lift up as much as possible. Now there's a lot of masking fluid on the paper so I'm also trying to get all those little spots and speckles, but you guys can see as I'm removing the masking fluid, you can see how we really develop those layers. So we're getting kind of our layers of waves. And I think this technique turned out really good and I'm really happy that I can share it with you guys. I really hope you guys will try it. It makes me wanna paint more beach scenes. I personally want to kind of rough up some of those pristine white areas. You don't have to. So I'm just using a spray bottle of water to encourage my paint to kind of enter some of those areas. So it's not so clean edge. But if you like the clean edge look, by all means, you don't have to do that. It just kind of bugged me a little bit. So now I'm using some white gouache. I'm just going to add in some final details here and there, some details on our seashells, some details on our sand and some details on our waves. much or how little you want to do this is totally up to you. I'm mostly using it to add in some highlights on the seashells just to kind of clean things up and delineate them a little bit better and to add in some more delicate kind of lace work sort of effect on our waves and to add in some additional froth. So it's it still looks good even without all that. And it really kind of just depends on what you feel like it needs at this point. We're just kind of zhuzhing it up so that it's to your level of taste. Now, some people might like it really simple. Go for simple if you like simple. I'm also doing a splatter with our gouache just to add in some additional froth and to really give the implication of like sea foam and sea froth. I'm even using like a direct flicking motion to get like the really tiny sort of sea spray droplets that you might see at the beach. it's had a chance to dry totally, utterly, completely, and fully, I'm removing our masking tape, pulling away at a 90 degree angle. So if it tears, it doesn't tear into our art. And there we have it, another stash buster watercolor bookmark that we painted together. I really had fun painting this one and I'm really happy with how it turns out. Sometimes I have to do the bookmarks a few times over to kind of refine the technique and get something that I really like with like the mermaid scale bookmark that I did not long ago. But this one was one and done and I had so much fun painting it and I hope you guys not only had fun painting it but had fun hanging out with me and hopefully I gave you guys some good ideas. If you're looking for some more fun watercolor tutorials, I've got a whole playlist list of stash buster watercolor tutorials designed to get you picking up your paintbrush and painting it's all part of me helping you make art a habit because that's really important to me but if you're looking for more basic watercolor tutorials not only do i have a quick and easy watercolor playlist for you guys but i have a watercolor crash course coming up for y'all that i'm really excited about hopefully that'll really get you guys painting if you're not painting yet or if you're interested in trying watercolor but you're not sure where to start that series is designed to get you painting and I hope you guys will look forward to it. And one way you can make sure you don't miss it is by clicking that subscribe button and hitting that bell notification and letting YouTube know that you wanna hear more from me. If you're not into that, I get you. I also share updates over on my Patreon as well as on my Twitter. So hopefully you guys won't miss any updates from over here. So I hope you guys had a wonderful day. Huge, enormous thanks to my amazing patrons their sponsorship helps make tutorials like this possible and it allows me to share them with you guys for free rather than putting them up on domestica or skillshare so thank you guys so much